Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Dirt Grain Steel. My name's Brandon, has been for a very long time. So anyways, tonight we're going to be building a water manifold that will distribute water to different functions of my trommel. Now if you've been watching my channel and you've been following, we've been working on the feed hopper for the trommel, we've been working on the little conveyor, we've been working on the hydraulic valving for the trommel. So now we're going to be uh, start working on some of our uh, fresh water that we use to wash the stone. So what we're going to be doing is I've got this old propane tank that my Uncle Jamie gave me that he didn't use anymore. I've left the valve out of it for about a week and a half now, so there are no fumes left from the propane. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting a 4-inch uh, cam lock fitting in this end. We're going to be feeding that from my uh, Berkeley pump that I'm going to be pumping water with. We're going to feed this. We're going to pressurize this. And then we're going to come in the sides here and we're going to put, uh, I think we're going to put four, four in, or four two-inch pipe fitting ports that we can put valves on. And then we're going to come out the bottom end here with a three-inch that's going to feed the trommel itself. So these two-inch ones... One will feed baby trommel, one will feed the sluice box, one will feed the pre-wash, and then I'll have a spare that I'll probably run as a bypass. So that if I have extra water, because that Berkeley pump's going to put out a lot of water, especially with 150 horse international diesel running it. So I'm going to have plenty of water, so I might have to uh, just get rid of some of that water. So that's where the bypass comes in. I can run it into either just run it back into the pond to spray on my... Uh, uh, screen out there to keep the leaves and stuff off or whatever so that gives me options to put water other places so I'd rather do all this now get it done and then not get out there and be like oh man I wish I had one more two inch port or you know you know how it goes so anyways these projects we've been working on we've been using the new rebel EMP215 from ESOB we've been using the Forney Easy Weld 20P plasma cutter We've been using the Easy Weld Forney 140MP and a bunch of other cool uh, metalworking tools that I've acquired in the last couple weeks. So, uh, and plus, I think I'm going to start a uh, series of YouTube videos that are just on tools and how you use them and how to properly use some of these tools. So, anyways, shop's a little bit of a mess because I've been dragging stuff in and out the door. Going out there to work, coming back in here, especially this weekend when it was hot, when the sun was out. I started in the morning, drug all my tools out there when it was cool, and then the sun started hitting the hopper, so I had to drag everything back in. So uh, let's get started. We're going to take the 20P, and we're going to start cutting our desired holes. We need to cut this top ring out so we can drop a big pipe nipple in there, weld all the way around. Then we need to mark out where we want our 2-inch fittings. And we'll get them started and get them put in. So stay tuned. Going to be a lot of Forney Easy Weld 20P plasma cutter cutting. And uh, we might do some welding on this video. I'm not sure yet. Let's see how long this one gets. So I'm going to get started. Okay, so we're going to start cutting. Uh, I got a 30 amp breaker and put in my breaker box. And I have discovered that the heavier the extension cord you have this is a very heavy extension cord i think it's a black jack or something uh, dad strength suggested i got one of these extension cords because i was running the 20p on just a normal extension cord and i was uh experiencing voltage drop and it was causing the plasma cutter to not cut properly so, I got a heavier extension cord, and uh, things have been a lot better with it. And plus, with that 30 amp breaker now in my breaker box, I haven't been tripping a breaker. So, if you're going to run a 20P plasma cutter from Forney, get you a 30 amp breaker. Make sure that your electrical in your shop can handle that first. So, we're going to cut this top out, and we'll see how this goes. Oops. 
tap it out with a hammer. Oh, there's a little fire in there. That's okay. Just let it burn off. Well, I thought it was completely evacuated, but obviously there's a little bit of something still in there. Which is okay, as long as it don't blow up. So, I'm going to let that fire go out. And then we'll uh, continue on. Must have been some residue in there or something. So, anyways, I got to get a hammer and knock that out. That's just a... Yeah, it's just a little fire. A little bit of flame that never hurt nobody. Oh, it's out already. Well, I must have missed a few spots. It must have went a little too fast. See, I'm trying to cut around that weld and use that weld as a guide. So, let's cut a little more. Might have been a little into that weld. that threaded down in there and get it squared up, get it welded in. So uh, there's our big hole. Now uh, I'm going to mark that out and uh, figure out where I want to put my two inch holes. So now I've measured these out. Every six inches I'm going to put a, uh, a uh, two inch pipe nipple in. And uh, actually I'm going to cut these in half so I get two out of them. And every six inches I'm going to put one in. And then that'll give me threads to thread a valve on, a cap on, a, a cam lock fitting, whatever I want to do on there. So um, I've got these handy little plasma cutter templates that you just put your uh, plasma cutter tip in here and go all the way around. And this will give you give us a two inch hole. This will actually give us a three quarter hole. I've got a whole set of these work real nice. Um, the only problem is we're working with a round tank. So uh, what I'm going to do is just try to hold these up here approximately where I want my hole, get them lined up, and then I'm just going to trace them and call that good enough. Just burn that mark out. What I always like to do when I'm cutting a tank or a round pipe I always like to try to find this seam, and then that seam gives me a nice straight line from end to end of the tank because that seam is straight. And then these seams, like on the cap, on the ends of the caps, you can measure off of these and whatnot, whatever you need to do to get square. So when I built the Trommel, I actually that was an anhydrous tank or a thousand gallon propane tank, whatever you want to call it, and I actually done all my measurements based off the seams in the tank so I could get stuff straight on the round surface. And these don't have to be perfect. I mean, we're not building no piano. If I was building pianos, I probably wouldn't be doing YouTube. At least it's cooler out right now. Today was just absolutely wicked. Okay, so I got all my holes marked out. Now I'm going to cut them out. Probably only going to do maybe one or two on video because if not, this video is going to get really long and nobody likes to watch my long videos and listen to me the whole time. Now, where did my gloves go? I don't know where my gloves went. Oh, there's my gloves. Right where I left them. So let's uh, burn one of these out, or two of these out on camera and see how it goes. And again, we're using a 40 Easy Weld 20P plasma cutter. We're going to start off to the side. Jesus Christ. That was cool as shit. <laughs> I got it on video. 
Okay, in all seriousness, that could have been bad. Stuff happens. Um, got to thinking about it, that could have been a bad explosion. So, I thought I was under the impression, don't ever think. Uh, you know what happens to thought. thought. Thought he had to fart, but he crapped his pants. So anyways, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to evacuate this tank a little bit using the DeWalt blower. I'm going to shove it in there and blow some air in it. I've done this a little bit already. We're going to do it a little more just to be safe. See if we can get whatever fumes are still in that tank. How they're still in there is beyond me. So, let's try this again. I mean, it's not like it was going to be a huge explosion because the end was open. It was basically like kind of like a potato gun at that point. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start cutting again, and uh, we'll see what happens this time. Hopefully we don't have an explosion again. I'm going to stand to this side, so if it does blow out, it's not going to hit me. Try this again. I'm gonna stand off to the side so it don't hit me, whatever. Oh, much better. Go around here so I can see. That'll be nice. That'll be great. So, let's get another one cut out here. Start it over here. Burn our way in. There we have all four of our uh, two inch holes. Uh, we've got our four inch hole in the end here. And now I think I'm just going to make another four inch hole down here in the end. And I'll probably just put a reducer bushing in it because I don't have a three inch pipe fitting here to use. But I do have a weld in bung. And this is a flat enough surface that I can weld that in there. So uh, I think I'm just going to go that way. I have an option if I want to put a 4 inch down here. Um, what you got to remember is just because I'm running 4 inch out of this does not mean I'm going to use that full supply of that 4 inch water because it goes to the spray bar and the trommel and it's reduced down to a bunch of half inch holes. So people are going to be thinking well is there going to be enough water to be able to force water into them two inches well you got to remember with each of them two inches they're not a free flow so with all the volume and pressure that this has there will be plenty of water for everything like i said i'll have to have that bypass to probably get rid of some water so uh we're going to continue on i'm going to get this hole in the in the uh, bottom put in and then that'll probably be it for this video uh, because it's going to be too long if not. So uh, I was trying to figure out how to mark out for this bung because this ring right here needs to drop down in the tank. So a 5 inch Milwaukee hole dozer fits on there perfectly. So we're going to center the hole dozer in the bottom of the tank. We're just going to eyeball it. 
close enough. Trace around it with a marker. And then cut the line. And that will give us a uh, line to follow. And it should be dead on. Because the flange is so large on that weld in bottom that we got plenty of material to work with. some uh, national pipe thread, pipe threads in there. So, I think that's going to be it for this episode of Dirt Grain Steel. Thanks for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you were, wonder if you were wondering what uh, welding table we're using here on my channel, uh, we're using a Nomad use, uh, made by Stronghand Tools. This thing has been wonderful. I love this table. Great fabrication table. Um, I like these slots. You can either put a clamp through or you can cut a piece of steel through with the plasma cutter or torch or whatever and have the piece laying up here and you still have a nice place to cut through. So uh, anyways, that's going to be it for this episode or it's going to be way too long. So if you like gold mining you want to check out how I'm going to do it, uh, give me a like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, tomorrow night we're going to get this welded up. That will be a whole other episode because this will make this one way too long. Kind of looks like a birdhouse right now be kind of an interesting birdhouse really maybe i'll make another propane tank birdhouse we'll see but anyways like i said thanks for subscribing thanks for watching we're going to hit 400 subscribers pretty soon thank you all that have subscribed and following me on this journey of mine so till next time i will see you on the next one